Marvel's Avengers is out. My question is, are you playing it? Let's get into it. All right, before we kick this video off, guys, one of the things I want to do is give a special thank you and shout out to Square Enix for multiple reasons. One is for providing a review copy of the game and also for sponsoring my live streams on Twitch, which if you're curious about catching my streams, I'm over there. So make sure you go over to twitch.tv slash Mikel Casanova. Um, getting that out the way. I want to say when it comes to Marvel's Avengers, I kind of have a little bit of a history with it in the sense of I was at E3 2019 and one of the things is I stood in line uh, with one of my friends and we were waiting to see this game like there was just so much hype around it. They had the whole, you know, Avengers HQ based thing set up in the, on the showroom floor. And it was all hype and I'm over here like, all right, let's, let's do this. Right. So we're waiting in line and we, it took us like three and a half hours to finally get in. We're thinking, oh man, we're going to get to play the Avengers. You know, it's going to be hype only to come to find out. We're going to sit in a room with a bunch of Astro headsets, shout out to Astro. And, uh, other than that, we're going to watch the devs play the game. We're not going to play it. And. I will be honest, when I first saw Avengers at E3 last year, I was completely underwhelmed. I did not like the way the game looked. It looked graphically like mid-generation this generation. And it just, it, it, it was not impressive. It was janky as hell. And I was just not impressed at all. I immediately lost interest in it. And then, you know, over the next year and a half up until now, like I just didn't really care for it. But then I started seeing some of the more stuff that's, you know, come out in recent trailers where they did a complete graphical overhaul. There's more details in the characters, inflections, muscle tone and, and all the like. And I was like, whoa, this is looking serious. And I saw the gameplay, which looked incredibly more refined than what it did in the initial E3 uh, experience that I saw and I saw the direction that they were going with it I saw that they were doing more of a you know when they announced games as a service you know people were losing their minds they were out there saying like oh they're gonna do pay to win oh this is gonna be another crappy looter type of game the thing is they took a premise that was actually pretty pr pretty well done they took the destiny format AKA Warframe format and mix in some MMO aspects of it to give you a game that's going to run for many, many years. And it's always going to be updated more story, more content, more characters. And a lot of people, for some reason, were super worried about that as a premise, thinking that this is just going to be some type of quick cash grab. And I'm here to tell you now, after having played it on both PC, which, you know, shout out to Square Enix for providing a review copy on Steam, as well as playing it on PlayStation 4, the game has come to be one of my favorite games of the year. And this review, I'm going to be diving into why it's a really, really, really good game. Like, I'm going to be covering the gameplay, I'm going to be covering, you know, why I'm so obsessed with the game because it's just, it is really way, it's blown all my expectations out of the water. And I know I'm spoiling the review by saying, yes, you need this game, but I'm gonna go ahead and go into detail as to why, why I think this is one of the most influential games to come out in quite some time. And uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and we're gonna dive into the review of Marvel's Avengers. The story kicks off following Avengers teenager superfan Kamala Khan as she heads to an Avengers unveiling of their second headquarters in San Francisco event with her father Abu. Kamala roams around the Avengers event and runs into other fans and partakes in a collectathon of comic books to gain access to other parts of the event. Kamala runs into several of the Avengers from Thor to Captain America and even Iron Man. After the show of the Expo starts, explosions start going off in the surrounding area which prompts the Avengers into action. The Avengers battle a mysterious band of mercenaries led by longtime rival the Avengers Taskmaster, who battles with the Avenger 
Black Widow while Thor and Hulk and Iron Man take on the mercenary band while Captain America is on the Chimera helicarrier fighting the terrorists there, which ultimately leads to the destruction of the Terrigen Crystal, which is destroyed, leading to the death or the supposed death of Captain America and the release of Terrigen Mist, which creates the inhuman disease, causing countless civilians to become what's known as the superpower beings and humans. This event known as A-Day leads to the disbanding of the Avengers and the rise of the conglomerate known as AIM. Now, as far as the story, this is as far as we're gonna go because I don't wanna spoil anything for you guys. I think you should definitely dive in and play yourselves because this is something I can see this playing out on the big screen. This is how good the story is. Let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay is a mission-based third-person action adventure style brawler that has you playing as any of the six initially playable Avengers as you select missions from the Chimera's war table. Depending on the mission you select, you'll be able to play missions with a singular character, or you can have a team of two, three, and up to four heroes, which you can play any of these missions in a single player style with the CPU controlling the other heroes or with other players that are online assembling a team to go out and tackle the various missions. Each of the Avengers plays incredibly different from one another, with Captain America being a brawler that can combine his boxing and kickboxing skills with his shield attacks, the war playing similar to Kratos from 2018's God of War with his hammer attacks mixed with lightning strikes and AoE or area of effect abilities, Miss Marvel using her stretching abilities to grapple enemies and be a good medium to long range fighter with Black Widow playing like a mix of Laura Croft mixed with Max Payne and Batman from the Arkham games with Iron Man playing almost point for point like he was pulled from Anthem that came out you know, last year. And finally, you have the Hulk who, you know, just Hulk smash, you know? Combat really boils down to alternating between light and heavy attacks with the character specific abilities and dodging. It sounds simple, but it can be strategic in practice in theory when you include doing things such as increasing aggro, countering, uh, mid combo, you know, being able to change things such as like, if you're playing as Captain America, you can change your abilities and, and weapons on the fly mid combo. So it's very complex. It's layered under a simple interface, but it is pretty deep. Missions play out with you having to either secure various points by standing in their highlighted squares or circles while the bar raises as you compete with the enemies to get 100% on the meteor or with you having to defeat all enemies in an area and a, you know, you'll end up fighting a, a level boss as well as levels having you save captured in humans or levels having you destroy certain objects and even missions that have you doing everything mentioned above. Any of these missions can be completed in any order and offer additional story elements to flesh out more of the characters in the world and lore. There are also training room elements, better known as harm room missions that have you in a contained room needing to compete against, you know, the enemies or complete certain objectives or, you know, pairing anything can vary from like pairing attacks, execute perfect dodges, or fighting wave after wave of enemies. There are also timed event missions where you have to complete various objectives and execute certain actions in them to get access to some nice items and equipment, similar in ways to other service-based games like Destiny and Warframe and even MMOs like Final Fantasy XIV. You can do faction missions for shield, which give you experience and items and more. The game has RPG elements to it with a skill tree system, allowing you to not only level up your character, but gain new abilities and moves along the way with, you know, also being able to uh, equip items that have passive and active buffs. With equipment, you can use materials found on missions to upgrade them to increase your damage output, as well as defense levels, cooldown speed for your abilities and gain the buffs that I spoke of earlier. You'll also be able to dismount your equipment to get more materials that can be used to upgrade equipment and accessories that you do uh, like. And with how much equipment you gain from defeating enemies and exploring levels, it's fine to not try to hoard items. 
You'll gain items and equipment that have varying levels as well as being either common, rare, or legendary, which, you know, you can either find in mission or from the various shops available on the Chimera. Graphically, when I saw this game in E3 2019, after spending like three hours in line, I just, you know, like I said in the intro, I was incredibly underwhelmed. And look, you know, the game just, it looks so good. Like it, it looks Final Fantasy VII Remake good. And if you're playing it on PC, you can experience this at a higher frame rate in 4K. And let me tell you, it is glorious. It truly is. No matter what you play this game on, it looks incredible. From the character models to the enemies, environments, and the construction costs, and more. The visual upgrades done to Cap and the crew is truly astounding, and I'm glad to see so much of the details from Dust and Dirt and War showcased on the characters. The in game cutscenes, which are utilized in the in game uh, engine, uh, they, they truly shine as they look fantastic with so much detail in the lip syncing to the muscles flexing and more, making it hard at times to not think that you're looking at lifelike characters. On console, you have the capability of running the game at 1080p, 60 frames per second, on the base and, you know, the base PS4 and base Xbox One. And on, uh, at 4K, 30 frames per second on the Pro and the 1X variations. On PC, you can run the game to whatever your max settings are, as I ran the game at 4K 60 frames per second with HDR10 turned on, connected to my gaming monitor, and on my ultra wide monitor, I ran the game at 1080p 144 hertz with HDR10 in ultra wide viewing format. And at no point did I have any snags or hangups in performance with these settings, except for when I ran it through XSplit, but XSplit is a resource hog. So I can't really, I can't blame the game for those issues. That's XSplit. Anyway, uh, one last thing to bring up is if you buy this on PS4, or Xbox One, then you get a free upgrade to the next gen versions on PS5 and Xbox Series X, which guarantees you'll have a next gen game to play, even if it's a port of a current gen game. Now, when it comes to audio, the voice acting here is superb with the likes of Nolan North, Troy Baker, Sandra Saeed, Jennifer Hale, Laura Bailey, Travis Willingham, and Jeff Shine at the helm delivering an Oscar worthy performance as the Avengers. Jeff Shine shines, no pun intended, uh, in his role as Captain America, complete with his Brooklyn accent and more giving authenticity to Cap that he honestly lacked in the MCU. Nolan North is great at portraying Tony Stark. However, he does slip into his Nathan Drake voice quite often. And Troy Baker does a great job capturing all the nuances of Bruce Banner, including his quirkiness and his dry humor. Uh, Laura Bailey is the definitive Black Widow, uh, bringing a level of badassery to the role with her take on the iconic agent, making you think that no one stands a chance against her should they step to her. Sandra Saeed excels in her role as Kamala Khan, bringing the idealistic teenager fangirl to life with what is the most believable sounding character I've heard in some time. The soundtrack is well done, even if no songs ultimately stand out, everything fits the scenes that they are played in. The sounds of explosions and punches, and especially the slams done by the Hulk when he go, he just grabs foes and flings them all over the place. They all have that theatrical weight to them that, you know, it just sounds just perfect. Now, all right, I've given the game a lot of praise. I've even kind of criticized it for 2019 E3, but let's talk about the downsides. And while many complain about the microtransactions in the game, I personally don't have any issues with them, given that you don't have to spend money unless you want to. Everything in the game can be unlocked by playing the game as it is and grinding and, you know, like it's just replay value. It's what we used to do back in the day. It's an old school gaming principle, you know, just get the most out of it by making you play more. I don't see an issue with that. And if you don't want to and don't have the time to spend on grinding, then you can spend real world money anywhere from $5 up to $99 to get credits that you can use to unlock costumes and more in the game. Again, the microtransactions in the game are not forced upon you. They're 
entirely optional. I'm kind of interested that that's a narrative that's being spun around that is forced on you when it's really not. The only true downside I experienced was with my review copy prior to launch on Steam running into some hiccups such as being stuck in walls and the harm levels and having frame rate and performance issues due to a lack of optimization. Thankfully, that was all taken care of with a patch on launch day. And well, actually, I think a second downer is the fact that Spider-Man is exclusive to PS4 and PS5. So if you have the Steam, Stadia, or Xbox One or Series X version, then you're out of luck, which you know, while I get the reasoning behind it as Sony owns the IP, well, the, you know, the rights, well, not the IP, but the rights to using Spider-Man in film and TV. It, and I guess an incentive to sway buyers to the platform, in my opinion, ultimately, I, I kind of view it as anti-consumer. And honestly, it just feels like a scummy business practice on Sony's end because it the way that's being pushed is any other version that's not PlayStation is the inferior version and I, I don't like that. I really don't like that. Well, okay. Let's get it back on a more positive note. Let's talk about the recall. Let's wrap this video up, put a bow on top of it and uh, make it look pretty and present it to you. And honestly, Avengers is a game I believe will have a lot of people split on it due to content creators bashing the game for being repetitive, well, at least to them, not to me. Uh, and the microtransactions, which they all seem to be focusing on for negative press towards the game. However, I feel like the game, you know, and, and I feel like the game is good. And, and generally, I feel like people, if they actually sit down and play the game, they'll come to truly love it as I have and find a lot to love here. There's just plenty of fun to be had, especially if you're playing with friends with six unique initial characters to choose from, varied gameplay with mission-based structure, a well thought out and executed plot with an amazing voice cast and the promise to support the game for years to come with additional content and heroes to play as. Marvel's Avengers is a game you need in your collection. I, I don't know what else to say. The game is that damn good. Um, it blew my expectations of what I would think this would have been. I mean, is it, you know, 2019 Spider-Man? No, it's, it's not. It's or 2018, Spider -Man. 20, I think it's 2018, 2018, 20, I forget when I forget the year, but it's not that, uh, it's an entirely different beast that I think people would truly enjoy. They just need to sit down. And play it and this has kind of been my issue when it comes to like reviews like people take reviews as the be all end all and don't experience it themselves like i'm thinking to myself like do you guys remember when we were growing up as kids when literally we had magazines and blockbuster or hollywood video and that's how we played games back in the day that's how we knew about what was coming out what was new what was good what was not good now it's just it's a form of warriorism. Someone says that they don't like something and people just go with it. Strange. But anyway, that's the review. What do you guys think of it? Do you like the Avengers? Do you have it? You know, are you enjoying it? Do you hate it? Whatever your thoughts are, let's get the conversation going down below. Again, shout out to Square Enix for providing a review copy on Steam and for sponsoring my streams over on Twitch, which you can catch my streams over on twitch.tv slash Mikhail Casanova. And also, if you're interested in podcasting, where I interview people in the video game industry, as well as, you know, people at Square Enix, people at Ben and Amco, and many other gaming companies, and, you know, voice actors as well, such as Captain America, Jeff Shine, he's a friend of mine, I interviewed him. If you're interested in any of that, then catch me on the Casanova Podcast. It's available on all podcasting outlets, as well as streamed on Twitch, as well as uploaded on YouTube, so you can catch me with you know as i do what i do on there and if you want to pick up this game i've got amazon affiliate links down below you can pick it up i get a little bit of kickback and it helps out with the channel um with that being said that's it that's the review of avengers and honestly uh i like it i i think it's a really good game one of the best games of the year and with that being said if you guys want we have a discord you can hop on in there we got patreon as well for exclusive content that goes down and uh, you can become a channel member if you really want to support what we do here. And with that being said, Mikhail Casanova, Hawaii content creator and host of Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. I'm signing out. You guys have a good one. 
Have a blessed day. And uh, again, be amazing. That's not my line, but I'm going to use it. Be amazing. Anyway, have a good one. You made it to the end of the video, man. I'm Look, I'm so happy that you made it to the end of the video. That means that you enjoy what I put on this channel. You enjoy what you just watched. And since you did, go ahead and hit that like button. The other thing you can do, go ahead and sub if you enjoyed it. If you really enjoy the content right here, you're probably going to like the next thing. So go watch the playlist. Go watch some of the other recent uploads. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button. And if you really want to support what we're doing here, and you know, it's, it's, it's completely optional. But go ahead and become a channel member. You got that too? You ain't got to. But if you do, I appreciate you. Other than that, thank you for coming through. I hope you have a good rest of your day. And you know how we say out here in Hawaii, aloha. And I want to say mahalo, which is thank you. That's Hawaiian for thank you. Thank you for checking out what we do. I'll see you on the next one.